uh, hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I have, uh, it's good news and not so good news about Pastor Dave. The good news is they got all the cancer and he doesn't need chemotherapy. The bad news is, I'm going to read it to you. It's a short slideshow, so you don't have to go there. Uh, it says, Christy, his wife, put this together. And it's beautiful. I'll put the link if you want to, to go there. It says, Pastor Dave is in critical condition. Let's see how to turn down his the music there. I'll just let you listen to it a little. Okay, it's pretty loud. Okay, Pastor Dave is in... Wait a minute, I gotta back it up. Pastor Dave is in critical condition in the ICU. He developed complications after surgery. Trouble breathing, dehydration, and ileus. Okay. That is when the bowels don't reactivate after surgery. So they're just kind of there, not doing their thing. He developed pneumonia in one lung and sepsis, which is a total body infection. It's, it's not good. But it can be cured. Some people have survived it. He is now experiencing AFib, that's atrial fibrillation. Your heart is going too fast, and it's in a very irregular beat. A cardiologist has been brought in to the team. He is on a vent, has a pick line. That's uh, where instead of a regular IV, they insert a line directly into a large blood vessel, and it has three lines coming out of it so that you can insert all kind of meds. And because there's so much blood going so fast through it, you can mix drugs, whereas you cannot do it in a regular IV that's like in your arm. Okay, so he's got a pick line and a tube to drain his stomach. This is his wife, Christy. She's saying this is her doing it. I have faith that God will deliver him out of this and he will recover. The good news is that the cancer was all removed and no chemo is needed. Praise Jesus. May God bless you all. Okay, now, uh, besides that, I have another uh, praise, praise report. But, see, we still need to continue praying for him. But also, I uh, wanted to tell you what's going on. Let's see, I got several new emails. Um, Aubrey, she said, please share. I sent a screenshot of the emergency breaking news email I got about the false positive tests. The Lord feels so strongly against them that he pressed in on it hard and took control of the situation. Thank you very much for the prayers. The enemy is panicking and is starting to go for low blows. Okay, here's what's going on. Um, I don't know how I can share this picture with you. She sent me a, a screenshot that says the FDA warns of false positives with well, you can go to emergencyemail.org. The emergency email and wireless network health, breaking health news. FDA warns of false positives with certain COVID-19 tests, which we, we'd heard about. 
The U.S. Food and Drug Administration alerted clinical laboratories and healthcare providers on Monday about false positive results from one of Becton Dickinson and Company's COVID-19 molecular diagnostic tests. The test, designed to detect viral nucleic acid from the virus that causes COVID-19, is in use in nearly every state across the U.S. at hundreds of laboratories. In one study, the manufacturer found about 3% of the results were false positives. I would bet, if I was a betting person, that it's higher than that. Okay, and that's something else. All right, so now, what did I do? Trying to insist on giving her daughter the delay. Hello, I just wanted to update you on Daphne. When we left by squad to the hospital, she must have called 911. Her temperature was 104.5, I'm sorry, 6. Before we left, I made her chew two Tylenol tablets. When the nurse came back to get her vitals, her temperature had not dropped much. It dropped to 102, which is good. I mean, that's 2.6 degrees. But uh, anyway... And, and after getting Motrin at the hospital, it did not drop any further. After the doctor examined her, he wanted to get a urine culture. Poor baby was so dehydrated, we barely got anything. And they gave her Zofran to help her keep down fluids and gave her a cup of water. I don't know why they didn't start an IV on that child. Children can get dehydrated so quickly. Anyway, he gave her a cup of water. He told me if she could keep down the water that we could go home because we were really worried about dehydration at this point. He even brought up about giving her a COVID-19 test. At first I agreed because I wasn't thinking about what was being said. Later he came in and said that they ordered the test. And then I heard the Lord tell me, do not let them give your daughter that test. My face got red because I thought, here we go. I'm going to have to oppose doctor's advice. Again, the Lord repeated himself, child. Do not let them give your daughter the test. I said to the doctor, what if I decide against it? He told me I could do what I wanted, <clears throat> but he highly recommended I do it. Because if, because of, because, I'm sorry. Of, she did uh, say at the end, she apologized for the typos because she used the voice text. I don't know how you do that with email. But anyway, she was speaking this. So sometimes it doesn't quite understand what you're saying. So let me see what she might have meant here. I could do what I wanted, but he highly recommended I do it because... Of so they can control the infection and figure out who needs quarantined to control population spread. I told him I felt uneasy because of the reports from the WHO about all the false positives they had on COVID-19 about a month or two ago. He further tried to push the issue and said that all tests can have a false positive. I 
urine tests, blood tests, etc. I came back at him and said, yes, that's true, but COVID-19 had thousands of false positives. He berated me so much to the point where I said, okay, but what was strange about me saying okay was in order to keep the peace. I felt like the Lord allowed me to okay it. And the reason why was because he had a plan. I felt so uneasy about the whole test thing. I just, I couldn't get past it. Hang in there. Um, not just a feeling, but because the Lord just told me not to allow it. Before the doctor left the room, he told me the COVID test that he was going to do, I guess she meant, come back with, and her urine culture would take a few days to come back with results. And I would get a phone call. When he left the room, I held my hand up towards my daughter, and I said, Lord Jesus, whatever is on that COVID-19 test, I pray that you bind it in your mighty name. I declare that no weapon formed against Daphne will prosper in Jesus' name. Not even five minutes later, the doctor walks in the door and says, Well, we just had an interesting turn of events. Here's where the praise of the Lord comes in. He said, Okay, let me find my spot. We just had an interesting turn of events. We were able to rapid test Daphne's urine and it came back. She has a UTI. I will prescribe her Zofran, an antibiotic, and I will get your discharge papers. She did not receive a COVID-19 test that the doctor so diligently pushed on me. I feel the Lord allowed me to say okay because he sensed the distress I was under and then he handled the rest. When I declared no weapon formed against my daughter would prosper, he acted immediately. Not only was that situation in itself edification to me that I'm hearing his voice all the time, but that was the first confirmation on the subject of the COVID-19 test that they should be avoided. Even stranger and more awesome was the second confirmation that I just received a little bit ago. I got an emergency breaking news email that said false positives on COVID-19 tests. I was floored and amazed. The Lord is speaking to us. He is working things out in our favor. We need to trust his voice, that still small voice, every time we hear it. The only reason Daphne got to leave the hospital, though, was because she kept down the water they gave her with the Zofran. But when we left the hospital, the whole thing that she's been going through started all over again. High fever, throwing up, diarrhea. I've given her meds all through the night. Everything she drinks comes back up. I am so stressed, but I am trusting God through it all. If I cannot get her to keep fluids down, then we might have to go back to the hospital. I really appreciate you calling for prayer for her. She is a tough cookie. This attack on her is a tough one, and it must be spiritual because I notice when I start rebuking 
and praying over her it subsides for a little. She grabbed her bucket because she felt she was going to get sick and all of a sudden I started rebuking the enemy and I was saying I rebuke you spirits of infirmity in Jesus name and that I come against the enemy and that no weapon formed against Daphne will prosper. Jasper, stop it. Yeah, I'm going to put your collar back on you in just a minute. I started speaking healing over her in Jesus' name. And as I did that, the color returned back to her face and she relaxed. And she put the bucket down and laid down and ended up not throwing up at that moment in time. My son said, Mom, it's a comeback spirit. He explained to me what that was. He said, those are the ones you have to keep fighting until they finally go. So I will keep fighting. Please continue to pray as if it was so urgent that the Lord... And if it was so urgent that the Lord spoke up so much against these tests, then please, people... Heed the warning. I cannot doubt the confirmation I received. Love you, sister. And as always, God bless. Sorry for my punctuation. I did talk test. And then she said, I will send a separate screenshot of my email, which I already told you about. I asked her if I could share it. And she said, yes, please share. Okay. So that's good news and bad news on both of them. But this one, uh, I did say the boy said three days, right? Or that was a separate email. The, her son heard three days, that it would be gone in three days. Yeah, that's not in this email. Okay, so, um, let's keep praying for Daphne and Pastor Dave as we've got the good news. There's no, no more cancer, no more, it's not a COVID-19, and she didn't have to take the test, so those are praise the Lord reports. But she's still very sick, and Pastor Dave is still very sick. They need our prayers, so let's continue to pray for them both, okay? All right. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over them both and over Aubrey to give her strength to continue to take care of her while she's in this condition. And I pray for Christy, Dave's wife, and his family that God will hold them up through this all and that he will heal Dave and heal Daphne quickly of these issues that they're having. Dave's is very serious. Lord, he's going to need a miracle and you got plenty of them. So please send one down. In Jesus' name I pray. And make Daphne stop throwing up because she needs her fluids, Lord. Please, Jesus, you know all about that better than I do. I just know we got to have our fluids. I know dehydration is not good for a child that age, for any child. I can't believe they didn't keep her and give her fluids to tonight. Anyway, I'll say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, myself, my computer, and my internet connection, and over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.